inflammation, keto for weight loss, keto for insulin resistance. It's going to be epic. So allow me to just hit live here on YouTube and here we go. So this is a great opportunity for you to get your questions answered. Let me know if you could relate to this and you could let me know by just typing in, I can relate. The problem we have in 2022 when it comes to finding the right tools for your health, for weight loss, inflammation, autoimmune disease, whatever it is, the problem we have is too much information. Okay, the problem we used to have is not enough information. Now it's too much. It's confusing. It's conflicting. We're drowning in information, but starving for truth. What is the truth? How do you apply ancient healing strategies for your unique needs, your unique history, your unique goals? That's what today's conversation is all about. So if you can relate to feeling overwhelmed, let me know. And my job in the next 45 minutes is to answer as many questions as possible, bring clarity, uh, deliver hope to anybody who feels hopeless, so you could take action today. I see Pax says it's overwhelming here on TikTok. Uh, Becky agrees with me as well, and many, many others who are joining. So let me know where you're watching from. If you haven't done so already, put your city, put your state, put your country. My name is Ben Azadi. I'm the best-selling author of four books. I'm the founder of Keto Camp. Our mission here at Keto Camp is to educate and inspire 1 billion people on planet Earth. We're not a company with a mission. We're a mission using a company to get that mission accomplished. I hope you got that. We want to inspire a billion people. We want to wake you up and help you understand how incredible your human body is. So what we're going to do in this live stream I'm going to be answering your questions, but I want to acknowledge those who are joining me. I see Brooklyn in the house. I see South Africa in the house, Kelsey. I see North Carolina, Idaho. I'm in beautiful Miami Beach, Florida here at Keto Camp HQ. Tomorrow I fly out to uh, Salt Lake City, Utah and head over to Park City, Utah for the weekend to spend some time with my friends and colleagues, Dr. Dan Pampa, Dr. Mindy Pels. And my fiance, Natasha, is joining me as well. Hopefully, she's joining me. Um, Orlando, Florida in the house. Phil, uh, Pennsylvania in the house. South Dakota, Pensacola, California. Chris is joining us again. I got vitamin G for you over there in Arizona. So start sending your questions. I'm going to share something with you before I answer your questions. But you can start sending them. And what I'm going to do, I'm live right now on YouTube, Facebook, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. I'm going to view every platform and get to as many questions as possible. Before I do, I want to share something with you. And I was just in Austin um, two weeks ago speaking at KetoCon. I want to share something with you. I'm going to share some stats with you. And I shared these a couple weeks ago during my presentation in Austin, Texas is KetoCon, but I think this is worthwhile to repeat. So I'm sharing my slides. You can see them clearly on YouTube and Facebook, but if you're on Instagram TikTok or another platform, I'm going to read them to you so you could still hear uh, why we have a problem and how we actually have a great solution. So according to CDC's website, and I put the studies down below, and cancer.org, here are the stats. This should piss you off. This should really make you angry. According to cdc.gov, one in three women right now are diagnosed with cancer within their lifetime. For men, one in two. At least 60% of Americans are diabetic or pre-diabetic. I would estimate it's probably 85%. People are just not testing. They have no idea, but at least 60%. CDC predicts by the year 2032, which is just 10 years from right now, that one in two children are going to be born on the autism spectrum. Harvard did a study and they are estimating, they are predicting that by the year 2032, eight years from now, my friends, one in two American adults will be obese. Let me say that again in a different way. Half of the United States population will be obese in eight years, according to the trends. Not overweight, but clinically obese. Eight years from now, according 
to Harvard. When we think about the food given at hospitals, if you've ever been in a hospital, if you've ever visited somebody, for example, somebody going through chemotherapy, which is treatment for cancer, let's say they're in the hospital, they're at their hospital bed, the food given to them in their hospital room is the same processed toxic food that contributes to cancer growth. How backwards is that? How messed up is that? The food given to cancer patients is the same food that can contribute to cancer growth. Why are there McDonald's and fast food restaurants plugged into hospitals? Why are doctors going on their break from work to walk into a hospital, excuse me, to walk into a fast food restaurant in a hospital? Have you ever seen McDonald's and Burger King and other fast food restaurants at hospitals? They're everywhere. How stupid is that? How backwards is that? I always say human beings are the only species smart enough to create their own food and dumb enough to actually eat it. You see, here's the problem, my friends. Conventional medicine does not work. And look, there is a time and place for life-saving surgeries, and I respect those doctors who do that. But when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to preventative medicine, conventional medicine is a big fail. As a matter of fact, conventional medicine teaches you the exact opposite of what you should be doing to heal your body. Let's talk real quick about symptoms versus root cause. What are symptoms? If you have extra weight on your body, if you're overweight or obese, that is a, a symptom. Cancer is a symptom. Diabetes is a symptom. Autoimmune disease is a symptom. Fatigue. I want you to all list symptoms for me right now. What are some common symptoms people are dealing with? Put it in the chat box right now. What are some symptoms people are dealing with right now? And yeah, obesity is a symptom. Nobody has a weight problem. It's a weight symptom. When I was obese, I never had a weight problem. I had a weight symptom. So what conventional medicine does, high blood pressure, that's correct. Irritable bowel syndrome, that's correct, Ar Arlene. Um, what conventional medicine does is they treat the symptom. They give you a medication. They give you a surgery. Arthritis, another symptom. So let me explain how stupid and how backwards conventional medicine is so we could empower, you could be empowered to do the right thing with your health. Imagine this scenario, okay? Check this out. Last night, let's say you ate an entire pizza, you ate an entire pineapple, you ate two slices of cheese, cheesecake, a whole bowl of spaghetti and meatballs, 200 prunes, 50 strawberries, a pound of cheese, and two cups of sauerkraut. And you wake up today and you feel awful. Your stomach is killing you. You've got some symptoms. You're bloated. You're constipated, you have acid reflux, you've got gas, and you feel like crap. Those are a lot of symptoms. So you say, oh, I'm just going to call my conventional doctor, and I'm going to make an appointment with my conventional doctor. So you make an appointment, an, em an emergency appointment with your doctor, and you're like, doctor, I feel awful. I'm bloated. I got acid reflux. I'm constipated, and my stomach is killing me. And your conventional doctor hears your symptoms and says, no problem. We have an anti an antacid that I could prescribe for you, anti-flatulence, and five other medications, which is going to help you feel good today. What is that conventional doctor doing? Hearing the symptoms and treating the symptoms. What if that doctor would have said, hey, what did you eat? Don't eat that again. What you ate and how much you ate was the cause for these symptoms. So therefore, remove the cause, you won't get the symptom. Wouldn't that make sense? Wouldn't that be the right approach? That's what we teach at Keto Camp. We teach getting to the cause, removing the interference, and letting your amazing body heal itself. Are the symptoms a problem or are they feedback mechanisms to you? I want everybody to 
change your paradigm right now when it comes to any symptoms you might be dealing with. And y'all just listed a whole bunch and there's thousands, right? Symptoms are a good thing. Symptoms are a gift from your innate intelligence to show you something is wrong. There is a cause. It is feedback. If your check engine light went on, on a long road trip, that's a symptom. Do you just cover it up and keep driving? That wouldn't be a good idea. You would pull over, open up the hood and find out what the cause is. I want you all to open up your hood and find out what the cause is. And usually it's causes multiple things. That's why I love this quote from Alvin Toffler. He said, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. A lot of the stuff we've been taught by conventional medicine, mainstream media, government guidelines when it comes to nutrition is the exact opposite of what we should be doing. Einstein said, intellectuals solve problems, geniuses prevent them. So before I get to your questions, I just want to share that there's two types of people out there. There's a long line of people looking for toxic pills, surgeries, shots, and shortcuts. It's about 97% of the population are looking for shortcuts, tracing symptoms. But then we have the three percenters, you all, looking for a lifestyle change, understanding cause and effect, looking at the causes, removing the interference, and allowing your amazing body to heal itself. I want to empower every single one of you to be geniuses. So let's get into your questions. I see some questions rolling here on Facebook. I'm going to answer those. Then I'll get to YouTube, Instagram, and then TikTok. So Shirley says, I just had pounds done. Doctor told me I was the healthiest 67-year-old woman she has seen to date. She is a geriatric doctor. She began to ask me how I started and how keto works. That is awesome, Shirley. Congratulations. I'm super proud of you. Super proud of you. Ignacio, good to see you, my friend. California here. I'm your fan since I discovered you at KetoCon. I am so grateful for that, Ignacio. I'm your fan as well. So grateful you were at my lecture. Lisa says, Hubs and I have been doing keto for three years now. I'm 64 and he's 68. On no meds, we bike, we play pickleball, walk. It was hard for about the first 10 days but it is our lifestyle now. We both lost about 35 pounds and kept it off. We live in Westchester, Ohio. Lisa and hubby, congratulations. I'm super proud of you. We celebrate you. That is awesome. Gina says, love your book and uh, love. I have your book and love it. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Gina. I'm grateful for you. Thank you so much. Ignacio says, is the carnivore diet sustainable for a long period of time? No, it's not. Um, I don't think any diet should be followed for a long period of time. So we want to mix things up. Our ancestors always mix things up. They eat seasonally. So maybe if you've been doing carnivore for quite some time, you might add some fruit into the mix. You might add some low plant toxin foods into the mix. I love carnivore. I think it's amazing. I just did 40 days. As a matter of fact, Ignacio, when I was doing my lecture at KetoCon, I was on day 40. And then I broke it that afternoon. So I do it multiple times a year but I don't like the idea of doing it long-term. It could create some other health issues. Noel, good to see you in the Philippines. Suzanne says, is, it is a disgrace that they feed. The idea of nutrition is contributing to poor health. It is a disgrace. Do we focus on, do we focus on protein, vegetables, and then fat? We focus on protein, yep, and then fat, and then if low plant toxin vegetables. That's the way, the general flow of it. Yep. My hub's skin tags all went away on keto. Awesome. Skin tags are usually a cause of insulin resistance. So it sounds like your husband reversed insulin resistance and the skin tags fell off. Pretty cool. Chronic pain is a symptom. Absolutely. Ulcers are a symptom. SIBO. Three percenter. How many of you are three percenters? Chris, I know you're a three percenter. You always show up every Wednesday. I love it. Have you watched Kelly Hogan? She has been carnivore for 13 years. She's an outlier and maybe she's done a variation of carnivore. I don't know if she's 100% carnivore, but for most people, that's not a good idea. And good to see you, Elizabeth. Oops. Okay, let's get to some YouTube comments. 
I see the well-fed human says new subscriber here. Thank you, well-fed human. Welcome to the YouTube channel. Dennis Williamson says, Ben, you and Rhonda Patrick are on at the same time. I choose you. Thank you, Dennis. I appreciate that. Stella says, catching another live. Health Hollow says, excited for this one. I see Berlin, Germany in the house. Canada in the house. Guyana, South America in the house. Monica in the Bahamas. Good to see you again. Teresa in Dallas, Georgia. Frida says, happy to catch you live. Thank you, Frida. Happy to catch you as well. Jimmy says, hi from Chicago. Monica says, I'm on that mission with you. Yes, you are, Monica. Istanbul, Turkey in the house. South Carolina in the house. So here's a question from Fearless Freedom. My question has to do with people who eat vegan vegetarian diets or meat, poultry, meat, fish, poultry gives food triggers with autoimmune conditions. How to get into keto on a plant-based diet? Well, typically, uh, meat, fish, and poultry are recommended for autoimmune disease. But let's say you want to do a plant-based keto version. It's more difficult and more challenging, but it can be done. I don't recommend it long-term, but I recommend you check out my friend, Dr. Will Cole, and his book called Ketotarian. I've interviewed him about that as well, so you can check out the interview, but Ketotarian is the book. Amy says, hey, Ben, so glad I made it. How do I find a healthcare practitioner that will support me? Been doing keto for two years, triglyceride 77, HDL 87. Awesome cholesterol. My primary provider sent me to an endocrinologist who put me on Repatha. Amy, the, blessed, the best place is to join our academy. We uh, do all of that for you. Uh, we give you structure and support. We just brought on two amazing health coaches, Becky, and John, uh, Becky Niles and Jonathan Shane. And that's the best place, uh, ketocampacademy.com. If you want to join us, we review lab work. We give you structure. We give you accountability. We do amazing things. So everything is all in one and we order lab work as well. So ketocampacademy.com, Roberta, but I mean, excuse me, Amy, but your labs, those two markers you shared sounds amazing. So congrats to you. Roberta says, I've been doing keto and keto flexing for two years. I'm going on a cruise in February, been working on coming up with the strategy to not leave as cargo at the end of the cruise. Thoughts, please. Yeah, I would say stay active, walk after every big meal, avoid vegetable oils as much as possible. And I know cruise ships has have gyms, so go work out, especially on the days that you feel like you're going to overeat. Mary says, I worked in a hospital and nursing homes and nutritional services. You should see what they give diabetics. Yeah, it's, it's a shame. It's awful. It should be criminal. Dan, good to see you again from Atlanta. Amy says, cholesterol is 476. Had so many bad side effects that still after two months that are still occurring. I would look at 476 is high for total cholesterol. However, I would look at HDL, LDL, triglycerides, and C-reactive protein, homocysteine, and fibrinogen, and fasting insulin. We talk all about that. If you want us to help you, this goes for anybody. If you want me to be your coach, if you want the coaches that work with me, Becky, Alina, and Jonathan to also coach you, and if you want structure step-by-step -step on how to do keto and intermittent fasting and keto flexing plus accountability, ketocampacademy.com is where it's at. But look at those other markers. Amy, go watch my video. Go on YouTube and just type in keto camp cholesterol, and I break down exactly what you want to know about cholesterol with keto. So the fat-fueled registered nurse, oncology registered nurse here. I totally agree. Yeah, you've seen it firsthand. You've seen it firsthand. It is sad, Alina. So Dennis says, from West Valley, Utah. I'm going to go to Utah tomorrow. Uh, Salt Lake City and Park City. Symptoms, joint pain and neuropathy. Those are definitely symptoms. And reducing cellular inflammation and glucose and insulin can help with that. 200 prunes would have kept me in the bathroom floor all night. I know. It was an extreme example that I shared. Doc, conventional doctors can be creating more problems. That is correct. The first question my vet asked me is, what are you feeding your dog? My doctor has never asked me that question. Isn't that wild? Isn't that wild? Amy says, wow, thank you for the L-glutamine for sugar craving tips. No more cravings. Awesome. I'm so glad that worked for you. L-glutamine will help you wean. Jimmy says, I'm carnivore since January 6, 2020. I weighed 547 pounds. I've lost 220 pounds so far. 
Doctors say keep your sugar low, not doctors say keep your sugar low, not or high. What numbers is considered high and low? And what is the optimal number for fat burning? Well, first of all, Jimmy, it's freaking awesome. Everybody, congratulate Jimmy, J I M M I E. He went from, he, he was 547 pounds, did carnivore, and has dropped 220 pounds. Freaking awesome. So amazing. Okay. Your question, what are optimal blood sugar levels? Fasting levels of sh sugar, glucose, is 70 to 90, 70 to 90 milligrams per deciliters. But I would most importantly look at your fasting insulin because glucose doesn't give you the full picture, but fasting insulin gives you a better picture. So ask your doctors to get a fasting insulin done on you, and you want to see that under five. That's what I would aim for. That's your, your target, my friend. And congratulations, Jimmy. That is freaking awesome. Part of the problem is that people trust their doctors despite their health getting worse and worse. So true. Dr. Ken Berry talks about that all the time, the white coat syndrome. I'm going to get to your questions, TikTok, in a second. Kelly Hogan is 100% carnivore. She's an outlier. Most people will not thrive doing 100% carnivore for 13 years. My daughter is currently going through breast cancer, chemo. Her doctor told her she can eat whatever she wants. I'm sorry. That's terrible advice. Hope your daughter heals quickly too. I have a lot of interviews with cancer doctors. You might want to check out on my YouTube channel. Way to go, Jimmy. We're celebrating you. Okay, let's get to TikTok questions and I'll get to Instagram. How do I increase autophagy to help with loose skin? I drive fast three times a week. Is that enough? So loose skin, how do we do? How do we deal with that? Uh, autophagy could help. 36-hour dry fast is extreme, but that could help for sure. Strength training and building lean muscle mass, terrific for loose skin. Uh, increasing your healthy protein intake, great for loose skin. And B vitamin complex, great for loose skin. That's what I would recommend. We should talk some time about it, our pet's food. Yeah, I talk, I've made some videos on, on you know what pets should be eating. Dogs and cats should be eating primarily raw food, raw animal food. Um, they're designed to do that. And they should also intermittent fast as well. What if your fasting insulin is 21? We got some work to do. Uh, I would love to help you if you want to come into my academy or just follow the videos and the work that I put out there. But you want to do keto, intermittent fasting, strength training, quality sleep, move your body, several ways to reduce that. You can get that down under five before the year is up. Instagram, I'm coming to you now. Congrats, Jimmy. Becky, celebrating you too, Jimmy. Mir says, I've been doing keto for intermittent fasting and flexing for almost a year. My fasting insulin was 2.6 last year, and now it's less than one. And my fasting glucose was 72, and now it's 58. Should I continue keto or cycle carbs? Yeah, congrats. Um, I would do keto flexing. Cycle carbs would be a great approach. 511, Amir. Keep doing 511. Ricky, good to see you, brother. I miss you. Baru's content looking fire. Shout out to you and the editor, tippity top of the mountain. Thanks, Ricky. I love you, man. Appreciate you, Katie, and the kids. I miss you. Let's see what else we got here. Doing keto intermittent fasting. Okay, I already answered that. Can you do keto and marathon train? You know, Jonathan Shane, who's our, our new health coach, could help you out with that. It can be done. You might want to experiment with, with exogenous ketones and fat bombs and all that. Check out Zach Bitter's. Uh, runner Scotty. Zach Bitters is a, a fat adapted ultra marathon runner. Zach Bitters could, his info could help you. Can I build muscle and get tone on keto? Yes. I've interviewed Robert Sykes, Bronson Dant on my Keto Camp podcast, and we talk all about that. So, Robert Sykes, Bronson Dant, Keto Camp podcast, we talk all about that. Can be done. We just need to get in tune with our innate intelligence. Amen, Becky. Amen. What are your thoughts on using keto for seizure disorders in adults? There are experts in the field that won't touch the subject. I'm not an expert on seizures, epileptic seizures, but there's research out there that shows it works very well. 
started in the 1920s when they started using ketogenic diet for children with epileptic seizures. So it can be done, but I would recommend finding an expert in that field and it can work really well. I've seen it work really well for seizures. They would have to be more long-term keto therapeutic ketosis and maybe experiment with, with exogenous ketones. But this is not medical advice. I'm not an expert on seizures, but I have seen it work. Training on an empty stomach. I love fasting on an empty stomach. So many benefits. You get more growth hormone, more fat loss, more autophagy. I think it's a great idea. Most of my workouts are in the fasted state. Your thoughts on supplementing with DHEA? I would do a Dutch test first to see if that's even necessary. Dutch test is a great test to do. We order that for our Keto Camp Academy students, and we have a practitioner on board who reviews it for our members as well. Dutch test. Could be okay, but you got to do a Dutch test to see if it's needed. When are you coming for a conference in California? Love your podcast. Thank you, Ignacio. I have nothing booked for California, but my guess is 2023. There should be an event that I'll speak at in California. So nothing this year, but 2023 for sure. What do you, what type of fasting do you recommend for perimenopausal women? I recommend uh, chapter 12 of my book, Keto Flex. The 511 rule could work really well for post for perimenopausal women, excuse me. Ben, alcoholic drinks are allowed while doing keto and intermittent fasting. Okay, good question, Noel. Alcohol. How many of you want to learn about alcohol? Oh, Jonathan's on here. Jonathan, Keto Road, at the Keto Road, brand new health coach with Keto Camp, and he's serving our Keto Camp Academy students. He's helping you out with that question, and he's, he's awesome as well. We've got a great team. Uh, alcohol. How many of you want to learn about alcohol and keto? Let me know. So yes, Ben, please share about alcohol and keto. One of the most popular questions I get asked is, what can I drink? What alcohol is the best alcohol to drink on keto? I'm going to preface this answer by sharing that I do not drink alcohol. I do not recommend anyone drink alcohol. You kill brain cells. Your liver has to detoxify the alcohol. It slows down fat loss. It's not a good idea to drink alcohol. I haven't had a sip of alcohol in over six years. With that being said, I know not everybody is going to do what I'm doing and not have alcohol. You're going to have your alcohol. So if you're going to have alcohol, what are the better options? Let's talk about that. And this is perfect timing. Give me one second. My fiance is texting me. Okay, cool. She's doing okay. She's been having anxiety attacks. So I want to make sure she's okay. She's at a getting acupuncture treatment. She says, I just finished the, sh the session. It was really relaxing. I'm going to the spa for a bit. Okay. My fiance has been having a lot of anxiety attacks. Uh, her mom's in the hospital. So she seems to be doing okay. Okay. Um, I just interviewed a gentleman named Todd White. And that podcast is coming out on the Keto Camp podcast very, very soon. But it was freaking mind-blowing. I got to learn so much about the history of alcohol and wine and the corruption, the dirty secrets out there. So you're going to want to watch that interview when it comes out or listen to it. It'll be out on YouTube and Keto Camp Podcast next week. So I'm going to tell you first the worst alcohol that you should avoid, and then I'm going to give you the best option. How does that sound? The worst alcohol that you could drink is going to be conventional wine, most wine out there, loaded with additives, preservatives, sulfites, herbicides, and pesticides. As a matter of fact, Dr. Zach Bush, triple board medical doctor, shared on my podcast two years ago, the average California wine has 64 herbicides and pesticides in it. Ripping open your tight junctions, creating leaky gut, creating autoimmune disease, Avoid most wine. There is a set of wine that I'm going to recommend, but let me first talk about the alcohol to avoid. So most wine, avoid. Beer. We want to avoid beer. Beer is very estrogenic. Guys, if you don't want man, man boobs, don't drink beer. Ladies, if you don't want estrogen dominance, don't drink beer. Stay away from beer. So that's the worst to drink. Now, if you're going to have alcohol, here's the, gr the great news. There is a set of wine called dry farm wines. They're keto friendly, they're sugar free, pesticide free, additive free, sulfite free. They go through a very extensive certification process. And if I was going to drink alcohol, 
it would be this wine. My affiliate link with them, Alina, if you could type this in the chat box, it's ketocampwine.com. Ketocampwine.com goes to my affiliate page with Dry Farm Wines. This wine is freaking legit, okay? It doesn't leave you with a hangover. It doesn't leave you with all the negative effects of drinking alcohol. It's keto-friendly, sugar-free, 12% or less in alcohol, so low alcohol. Plus, you still get that feeling of feeling good with alcohol. Ketocampwine.com. Calm. Now, tequila could be a good option too, but it's really high in alcohol versus something like dry farm wine. So I would, I would recommend ketocampwine.com. And you're going to learn even more when I release that interview with Todd White very, very soon. So ketocampwine.com. And thank you so much for your kind words about Natasia. Will tasting food break a fast? Meaning, that's an interesting question. I don't think I've ever been asked that. Meaning, Putting food in your mouth, chewing it, and spitting it out? Is that what you're saying? (laughs) Uh, If that's what you're saying, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes because you will create an insulin response from chewing food even even if you don't swallow it. So even smelling a lot of food can create that. There was actually an article that Martha Carlin shared in our Keto Camp Academy about that, which was interesting. Vodka could be a better option than most wine and beer, but I would still go with dry farm wines. My dog is licking himself. So I hope that answers your question, Noel, and everybody else who wanted to learn about alcohol. Ever heard of a brand called Carbless? I have not, but I would make sure that they are a natural, organic, dry farm wine. But I've never heard of them, Melissa. Amy says, I don't drink. It's been five years. Congrats. That's the best option. Don't drink alcohol. But if you're going to drink, ketocampwine.com, dry farm wines is the way to go. Send your fiance a big hug. I know she'll get through this. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will. I've got chronic fatigue syndrome after two years of constant stress. Now I hit the wall. Is it a smart idea to do strict keto now? That's tough. I need to learn more about you. Chronic fatigue syndrome is, yeah, Ricky, it is. Dude, get it for you and the family, bro. Um, It's vegan friendly. It is. And they're imported from um, outside of the U.S. because the U.S. does not have good farming practices. So it's from South Africa, South America, and Europe. And they're keto friendly. And you could gift them to people, subscription-based. So yes. Okay, getting back to the question here about chronic fatigue syndrome. Chronic fatigue syndrome is a result of mitochondrial damage. Let me explain this real quick. The mitochondria, you might have learned about the mitochondria in in biology. I wasn't paying attention, but I learned it (laughs) from the last 14 years in the health space. Uh, Mitochondria are these energy factories that produce energy, but they're also a second role. There's an intelligence in your mitochondria and they act as surveillance system. There's some really cool research from Dr. Robert Navio on this, and I just lectured about this in KetoCon, that they're a a surveillance system. When the mitochondria has perceived too much stress, mental stress, physical stress, chemical stress, whatever it is, it shuts down energy production leading to chronic fatigue. Now, ketones and ketosis can be a great tool to because ketones create more mitochondria, mitogenesis. So yes, but how long should you do keto? That's going to be dependent on many other factors. So if you want to come into the academy, we could teach, we could kind of get an idea more about what you're dealing with and give you a, an approach. But ketones could help, but you also want to identify other areas of stress, mental stress, physical stress, chemical toxicity stress, and keep reducing your stress bucket and allow the mitochondria to see that things are safe. Because there's two things the mitochondria perceives, either wartime metabolism, too much stress, shuts down energy production to preserve life or peacetime metabolism ramps up energy production. So we want to get your metabolism into peacetime uh, uh, metabolism. Excuse me. Thank you, Ricky. We're supposed to go to Salt Lake City tomorrow and she's leaning towards going with me, but she's worried about having a panic attack on the airplane, which is a five hour flight. So I got some supplements and melatonin and things for her. Hopefully she'll be able to go with me and be okay as we travel to Salt Lake City, Park City, Utah tomorrow. Uh, What's your opinion on fasting before or after surgery? Uh, It could be great before surgery to reduce inflammation, even after for autophagy, but you also want to get some mTOR and high protein. So 
a combination of fasting and feasting after and fasting leading up to it can help. I did get GABA, Mike. Thank you. GABA is a part of that. Um, valerian root, lemon balm, melatonin, magnesium, B-complex vitamin. Gave her a whole bunch last night and she finally was able to sleep. That's the perfect thing. My fiance Natasha is dealing with that because her mom is in the hospital and that mental stress is leading to panic attacks for her. I mean, that's how powerful mental stress is, right? Thank you for that rescue remedy. I'm going to look that up. I literally walked by a Cinnabon in the mall and I, I felt like I gained five pounds smelling the food. Cinnabon has that strong smell. It does. It used to get me all the time when I was obese. Ricky knows all about that. He, he, my friend Ricky here, he's uh, seen me when I was uh, overweight and obese and he, we were friends and we are friends, but he's seen the transformation. What's your opinion on the saturated fats and red meat that can cause insulin resistance? Thomas DeLauer did a really good video on this. It's not a good idea to overeat saturated fats. It is true. There's studies that show that. There's studies that show when you're eating a ton of saturated fats, it could actually create a form of insulin resistance. So if you pair a ketogenic diet with eating saturated fat, but you're pairing it with intermittent fasting, it helps prevent that. But we teach everything is cyclical, right? Some days we have a high amount of saturated fat. Some days we don't. Um, I think Thomas DeLauer did a really good job uh, with his recent video of explaining this. And if you combine having healthy saturated fat with stable, healthy, polyunsaturated fats, like plant-based fats, flaxseed oil, primrose oil, um, it prevents the issue. But the best way to know if your approach is working for you, and we teach this in the academy, look at your fasting insulin, look at your C-peptide. Fasting insulin is going to give you a good idea of insulin resistance, and C-peptide is looking at the beta cells in your pancreas. Those are what I would recommend to do because um, it's so unique to the person. But there is a concern with overeating saturated fat and insulin resistance. Absolutely. But should we be scared of it? No. Thank you, Ricky. Appreciate you, brother. You got super ripped too, man. We got to get you back to that. Ricky, when are you coming down to Miami for some basketball? When you go to Cali, see if you can link up with Dr. Lauren Weiss at Lajala Nutrition. I haven't heard of Dr. Lauren Weiss. I will look her up, Lorraine. Thank you for that. Intermittent fasting. Does 12 to 13 hours intermittent fasting do anything if is autophagy possible? You're probably not getting a lot of autophagy just doing 12 to 13 hours of daily fasting, but there's still benefits to doing 12 to 13 hours for the gut and for fat loss. But I would work to extend that to 16 hours or so. That's when autophagy starts to get ramped up. Um, and that's just a guess. It's really hard to really verify that. But the more metabolically flexible you are, the faster autophagy takes place. If you exercise during your fast, you should get it sooner versus somebody who doesn't exercise during a fast. Sharon, good morning from California. Good to have you on here. I'm going to answer a couple more questions. I always fast when I fly, Dennis, 99% of the time. Always, and always fast when I fly. Uh, one of the best ways to help with jet lag, uh, airplane food is toxic, airport food is toxic. So I just drink hydrogen water on a plane and I always fast. Love your podcast. Thank you, Lorraine. Appreciate you so much. I have a court right next to me. You'll love no traffic too. Yeah, I got to get up to you and beat you in basketball, Ricky. We still been playing. Just found you, says Priscilla. How do you fix being a sugar burner? Good question. There's a free resource I'm going to give to you that gives you a 14-day uh, approach to go from being a sugar burner to a fat burner. It's called the Keto Kickstart Guide. So go to ketokickstartguide.com and download it. But you want to gradually decrease your carbs, eliminate the snacking in between your meals, increase healthy fats and protein, increase electrolytes and bitters, and boom, 14 days, you're a fat burner. So that Keto Kickstart guy talks about that. Farah says, I love your new book. Thank you, Farah. I appreciate that very, very much. Joanne says, I started doing one meal a day five days ago, doing fine, drinking water and eating healthy one meal. Any advice or any video I could watch? One meal a day is great. I wouldn't do it every day. It's going to be hard to get enough protein. 
So maybe two or three days out of the week, OMAD, and the other days, more of like a 16-8. You want to make sure you hit your protein requirement uh, on many, many days. So if you do OMAD every day, it's going to be hard to hit that protein requirement. Best tips to be metabolically flexible. Keto paired with intermittent fasting, quality sleep, and strength training. Boom, right there, Ignacio. Well, those are four tips. The best way is to get into our academy because we'll show you how to do that. But in general, that's it. Doing keto, then pairing it with intermittent fasting, and then strength training, uh, and making sure your sleep is improved. I read that if you take MCT oil 20 minutes prior to flying, it would protect you from EMFs. Well, that's interesting. Ketone, there's some research that shows that ketones can prevent, can protect you from EMFs. MCT oil helps you produce ketones. So I see the connection there. You could also take something like exogenous ketones as well. So potentially, yeah, uh, Brian and Joe Roach, potentially, yeah. <clears throat> okay, I'll answer one more question. Can my body absorb high protein more than 30 grams? Yes, it can. Your body is very, very smart. There, the myth out there that you can only absorb, uh, absorb a certain amount of protein is false. Your body could absorb, it'll use whatever it needs and the rest will be, the kidneys will filter out. So even more than 30 grams, yes, it can. All right, my friends, uh, I have a brand new episode on the Keto Camp podcast coming out Friday. It's actually my entire KetoCon lecture. Now that video version is already out on my YouTube channel, but the audio version is coming out this Friday on the Keto Camp podcast. Let me just explain this real quick. I spoke at uh, KetoCon Austin, Texas two weeks ago. I delivered a keynote lecture on the main stage, followed by my mentor, Dr. Pompa, followed by my colleague, Dr. Mindy Pels. All three of our lectures we put together to go hand in hand in hand to deliver a trifecta of presentation. So my presentation will be released, the audio version, this Friday on the Keto Camp podcast. Dr. Pompa's presentation, I'm aiming to release Monday, and then Mindy, Wednesday. How awesome is that? I hired a videographer and paid him thousands of dollars because the event was not recorded. And I, want to make sh I wanted to make sure you all who couldn't attend could still watch the, inter the lectures and listen to it, at least me, Mindy, and Pampa. So I paid him a couple thousand dollars to record it all to get it all together, upload it to YouTube, upload it to our podcast. I did that for you. So I hope you appreciate it. My lecture comes out Friday. Mindy, excuse me, Pompas comes out this Monday, and then Mindy next Wednesday. My lecture is already on the YouTube channel, but the audio will be on the podcast. And then Pompas video and audio will be Monday. Mindy's video and audio will be Wednesday of next week. So listen to all three back to back to back. Ricky, love you, bro. Go ahead. I'm going to sign off soon too. Listen to all three back to back to back, and you're going to benefit from it tremendously. So I hope you appreciate that we did that. Um, We'll do it for more events we're speaking at. I'm speaking, speaking at a lot of events this year. I'll be, I'll be speaking in Orlando, Florida at the Keto Orlando Summit, first weekend of August, just a couple of weeks from right now. And then I'll be speaking and sharing the stage with um, Tony Robbins at the Biohacking Live Conference in West Palm Beach at the end of August. Then I'll be speaking at Keto Symposium in New York City, end of September. I'll be speaking in Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, at the uh, first weekend of August. Uh, October at, at the Keto Palooza. I'll be speaking at Biohacking Congress here in Miami in October. I'll be speaking at Dr. Pompa's Live It to Lead It seminar in November in Utah. So there's a lot of events. I'd love to see you. I'll record as many as possible and pay for it to get it out to you, but I would love to see you. I hope to see you soon. I hope this was a valuable presentation. I got a lot of vitamin G gratitude for you all. Every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern time, I am live with you. So put it in your calendar. I'll be here again next Wednesday. In the meantime, subscribe to my TikTok. We're about to hit 300,000 subscribers on TikTok. It's at the Benazadi. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're about to hit 150,000 subscribers. YouTube.com slash Keto Camp, Camp with the K. Subscribe to my Instagram. We're about 50K plus subscribers on TikTok, uh, Instagram at the Benazadi. And my website is benazadi.com where you can find my books, all my social media, some articles and all that great stuff. Thank you for spending part of your day with me. 
love and appreciate you all. See you all soon. And thank you.